Hello everyone, and welcome to this mini-lecture on Walt Whitman and his poetry. So Walt Whitman was born in 1819, he died in 1892, uh, and he is considered a really big deal <laughs> as it comes to American poetry, as it comes to poetry as a whole, uh, his influence is, is pretty strong. Um, we see we see traces of him all the way up through the present. Um, a lot of his ideas, a lot of the ways in which he changed poetry or, or added something uniquely American about it is certainly true. Uh, if you're familiar with the Beatniks and uh, Allen Ginsberg's Howl, uh, there's a lot of ways in which Ginsberg's Howl reflects what we see in Walt Whitman's work. Um, you know, we see a lot of interesting interconnections. So, he was a poet, essayist, journalist. Um, he got his early start at, as an apprentice in a printing shop, and in fact you'll find there's a lot of writers uh, in American literature who that was the case for. It was the case for Benj uh, Benjamin Franklin, uh, it was the case for, if I remember correctly, Jack London, uh, Mark Twain, that at some point they serve as an apprentice to a print shop, and in many ways that exposes them to a whole lot of different writing which helps them create what is ultimately their voice. And for Whitman he is a, definitely a major voice in American literature, um, and his influ as I said his influence is still felt today. And one of the reasons he's very popular is in a very profound way uh, he did try to capture and represent the common people, and he tried to do this artistically and respectfully. A lot of poetry throughout history, or up until this point, doesn't really try to access or represent in positive ways the views of the working class, the views of the lower classes. Whitman constantly tries to do this. He, he tries to capture industrial America. And we'll see this, you know, we'll see this style repeated um, later on as we get to people like Car um, uh, Carl Sandburg and others, but he's one of the first and most popular to do it. He's not just, he does talk about beautiful things like nature and the like, but he also tries to capture and represent the people of America. Um, you know, the, the camera wasn't as popular as, as it is today or in the 1900s, and so poetry was one way in which you could capture um, the essence of Americans. In his writing, his work, it has worldwide influence. Um, he's certainly, you know, been translated in so in many many languages, and his work has served as inspiration uh, elsewhere. He was also a transcendentalist, and I think when we look at some of even just initially some of his poetry, we're going to look at a few open lines of "Song of Myself." It, it becomes quite evident. I mean, even that title, "Song of Myself." Right? It can, it, you know, in some ways it could sound narcissistic, oh, you're singing about yourself. But, in a very transcendental way, it is, you know, singing of that embrace of the inner truths of who he is. Uh, there is much to be said about his, about his, well, I shouldn't say there's much to be said, but there is a lot of discussion around his sexuality, because not only in his poetry but throughout his life, um, he has relationships that are, because we don't have all of the facts, are entirely hard to characterize, um, but there is clearly at times uh, male attraction in his life, in, in an expression of male attraction in his life, and so I think it's a, it's a fascinating element in, uh, that we don't fully get to explore um, either in this course or in general because we don't have access to those things but the idea that this was a part of who he was um, and a part of shaping the American voice I find is is a, a very interesting element. Um, he really is considered the American poet. Uh, we've had other poets come along since and there were poets before him but he's the game changer that's kind of you have poetry before Walt Whitman and then you have poetry after Walt Whitman and there's not there's no other poet in American history that you can really say that as strongly about um, just in the ways in which he alters or, or influences 
the the po the, the poetry of America. And as I mentioned elsewhere in the in the introduction to poetry lecture, you know he really does commandeer the free verse, and that's not to say free verse wasn't there before, um, but he you know him and his style really do change and make it accessible. And remember with free verse, it's not just you know I I write whatever and I call it poetry. It's that the rules of the particular poem are embedded in that particular poem and don't adhere to some other form. And I think free verse is, is an actual, is a great example of transcendentalism, right? So, so Whitman with, with free verse is saying, I will follow what I believe to be true about this poem. I'm not going to follow what society or other poets have dictated about the forms of poetry. And so free verse, it makes absolute sense why free verse became one of Whitman's great tools in communicating poetry and why it's so connected to him as a transcendentalist, because it is about freeing and following the trueness of the poem, not the trueness of, you know, the expectations of the poem. Alright, so we're going to take a look at a poem, Song of Myself, from Leaves of Grass. Leaves of Grass is what Whitman's, you know, it's his ultimate work. Um, it is a, a book of poetry that he originally writes in 1850, or publishes in 1855, self-publishes, 12 poems. It was, uh, when I say self-published, he pays for the initial publication. It had 12 poems in it. By the final edition, what's called his, his deathbed um, edition, which comes out in 80, 92 or 93, either, like right around the time of his death, um, it has over 400 poems. So he comes back to this. He, he releases, I want to say, nine or ten different editions of this book, and it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, um, filled with more and more ideas and, and thoughts that tie into the larger themes. All right, so let's take a look at Song of Myself, and we're just going to look at the, the, the first um, the first section of it, just to give you some tools to work with. As I said, remember, this is a tr this is very much a transcendental poem. Um, it is embracing that, that, that se sense of self. I celebrate myself and sing myself, and what I assume, you shall assume, for every atom belonging to me, as good belongs to you. I loaf and invite my soul. I lean and loaf at my ease, observing a sphere of summer grass. So that I celebrate myself and sing myself. Remember with the transcendentalism, this, is, this isn't bragging. This isn't like, I am the bomb, like we see necessarily in, in today's culture. This is more about embracing and appreciating and singing yourself you know singing yourself th there's a sense of being truth truth about you in your full embodiment right so when we sing ourselves it's not just look at me i'm awesome it's i am i am willing to vocalize who i am and who i am you know the, almost melodically who i am that it, it synchronizes with my essence that it just flows like music flows in what i assume you shall assume for every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you and so he's saying what i do there how i how i celebrate myself and sing myself you should too right you shall assume you do the same thing that is you know you love yourself as much as i love mine for every atom that belongs to me as good belongs to you you are no different from uh, from me right there there's n there's no difference between us so please go forth and you know sing of yourself celebrate yourself i loaf and invite my soul i lean and loaf at my ease observing a sphere of summer grass so herein he's fully invested and he's welcoming this moment to lean and loaf and to observe right he's not lost in other things he's not lost or he's not willing to be given away he's letting his soul stand with him and, and lead him into what to do and so in this case it's it's observing a sphere of grass you know and I think the, the sphere of grass the sphere of grass sphere of summer grass 
which I think will be interesting when we look at the nice the next line is is very interesting. A sphere, a a, a sphere, a, a single piece of grass, which in some ways is again a very representative look at an individual, right? That if we look at grass, that there's a very good um, parallel between grass. Many, 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 you know, spears that together form, you know, a, a, a patch. Well, isn't that like society? It's many, many individuals that form a society. And so he leans and he loafs Eve's observing a sphere of grass. Well, that sphere of grass, grass is him. Right? He's again doing the, taking this time. He's inviting his soul, and he's he's examining and trying to recognize that individual piece of grass, distinguish that piece of grass from all the other pieces or, or spears of grass out there. My tongue, every atom of my blood, formed from this soil, this air, born here of parents, born here from parents the same and their parents the same I now 37 years old in perfect health begin hoping to cease not till death creeds and schools in abeyance retiring back a while suffice it at what they are but never forgotten I harbor for good or bad I permit to speak at every hazard nature without check without original energy so in, in, and I'll take a step back and just say, Whitman is hard, um, especially if you're not into poetry. There's a lot that goes on in this poem. Uh, there's a lot that goes on in all of Whitman's poem poetry, and so it's going to be challenging. In fact, it's one of the reasons why this is where we end the course, is because poetry is, is one of the harder um, literary genres that we explore in this course. All right, but back to this. My tongue, every atom of my blood, formed from this soil, from this air, from this air. So, here we have, he's looking at the individual piece of grass, and he's connecting it to himself, and he's also connecting that grass and the soil to his own, his own body, right? And so he's recognizing this divine uh, connection, the, this interconnection of the universe, which is, you know, I would say influential of... Eastern spiritual ideas, right? Every atom of my blood formed from this soil, this air, right? So he's looking at that sphere of grass, thinking about that grass attached to dirt and made made alive through the air. You know that that him, like that piece of grass, is born from this earth, right? Born here of parents, born here from the parents of the same. I now thirty-seven years old in perfect health. And that 30, I think when we hear that 37 years old, in perfect health, that refers to, if we go back to that previous, that previous uh, section, a spear of summer grass. A spear of summer grass, when we talk about summer as a symbolic representation of life, summer really is, you know, when somebody is in their prime. And so with Whitman here saying 37 years old in perfect health, he's in his summer, right? He's in kind of a, a, a prime of his life, which, so we see the parallels between him and that piece of grass. Hoping to cease not till death. So again, kind of this drive, this, this wanting to kind of embrace everything. Creeds and schools and abeyance, retiring back a while, suffice it at what they are, but never forgotten, I harbor for good and bad, I permit to speak at every hazard, right? So regardless of those things, I, I still, you know, I, I permit to speak at every hazard. Nature without check, uh, nature without check with original energy. So the, that nature without check with original energy, that is, he's going to, regardless of these things, right? Creeds and schools and abeyance. Um, he's still going to embrace himself and not be held back. He's going to still have that drive and that energy to not uh, to not tear him down or to not still embrace the the beauty that he's finding um, or, or appreciating about the world around him. So this is just a, a very bare bones introduction to um, Song of Myself. It goes on, as you'll see, um, but hopefully it starts to give you some ideas to work with with Whitman um, as you get into his work. So 
Thank you very much for listening and see you in the next lecture.